Next thing we're gonna do is remove the uh, front seat. The way we did that was by getting a 12 millimeter uh, socket wrench and then pulling it out from each of the corners of the seat. This one was probably the most difficult and actually we ended up having to weld something to the bolt to get it out of the uh, out of the floor. Um, so to prevent that from happening, don't strip your bolts. Use the uh, the actual 12 meter, millimeter socket, not the uh, star version of it that'll end up stripping your bolt. Uh, breaker bar helps as well. Okay, once you get under the seat, there's a bunch of cables. These are all for your airbags. You're going to have to remove these um, very carefully. And uh, they're kind of difficult, but um, the way you can do it is you can push these in. And then you then you are able to push down on that and then remove each cable. Each one removes differently. So it just took a, like 10 minutes of work to get them all removed from the bottom of the seat. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the dash console here. And uh, there is a lever right here. You can just pinch that together and then pull that out. And then that removes like that. And then it pulls straight out if you wiggle it. Sweet. And it's just you're just pulling it from this bar that connects right there and there. All right, that exposes our ability to do some wiring that we're going to need to do. And you don't really want to remove any of this. I actually did, and I ended up kind of messing up the ability to put it back on completely. So that'll probably be a $100 fix later in the future um, as it kind of messed up the clips there. All right, now we can... Uh, Remove this plate right here. So I'm just gonna stick a pry tool underneath, get my fingers under there, and then I can lift it out. And it just lifts straight up. that little clip had some problems throw that back there and remove this pry tool and that bolt should just pop out let's remove this ceiling here and that'll probably help there we go Yeah, I can even just set it aside there. But it's also just a clip that goes onto a stud there. There you go, just that little guy. Next, I'll show you how to remove these plates here so that we can remove our stereo units so that we can splice into the back or tap into the wires of the, uh, the harness. All right, so I'm gonna take my pry tool and I found that up here is kind of the best spot to unclip the top. And I wanna to pull towards myself. There we go. I want to get that clunk noise because there's some blue clips back here that hold it and pops out. You can see there's four clips holding that in together. Do the same over here on the other side. Okay. 
There we go. Wiggling it helps. Get your fingers stuck in there. You probably have cut yourself once or time, twice doing all this. All right, and then for this top portion here, this was the hardest one. All right, so just get your pry tools behind these two spots here and uh, pull back as hard as you can because uh, that was pretty difficult. All right, put all that aside. And uh, now it exposes our one, two, three, four Phillips heads. All right, definitely by this time you want to have removed the electric so that your stereo isn't turning on when you're opening your doors and stuff like that um, by disconnecting that negative battery terminal. Okay, now this just slides out. And it exposes the back here. And we've got all of our wires that we need to disconnect here. So we'll just get these top ones undone because they're the easiest. <laughs> you can see they're all actually pretty difficult. And it's so humid here. They're kind of slippery as well. There we go. Get those top ones out. And then the, the ones I care about are these bottom right ones so if you're looking at the front the bottom right uh two uh plugs are the ones that i want to be able to get to and get those unplugged all right i want to get these unplugged by simply pushing it on the top and wiggling them out you can even get some pliers, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Get these pliers in. And you just wanna be careful not to get the cables while you're at it. Boom, super easy to do with the pliers. There we go. And I'll get this one out here just to give me some more leverage in the bottom right areas. Cool. So the ones I care about are these bottom two ones. There's a six, there's a one with four terminals in it, a total of a six plug, and then there's one with uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with a total of a ten plug. So the next thing I've done is I've taken my harness and I've separated my wires. So I've got my grounding cable, my power cable separated, but then I took all the, the blue line, which is my signal cable. And then I've got my uh, positive negative wires for my rear speakers that I'm gonna tap into and I just taped them. So now I can wire them through the vehicle a little bit easier. All right, apologies for the grass. I just mowed my lawn yesterday. I want to put the red wire terminal through a different spot because um, I don't want it to interfere with the signal coming from the rear speakers that's tapped into the harness. Alright, so this is where it's going to plug in. So I need to wire this through all of the spots and underneath of the carpet. 
And from what I've been told, this just lifts up. Just getting my fingers under the plastic. And then boom. Now I can get under here and wire myself all the way up and around. All right. Should be pretty easy, hopefully. You can even come through here if you wanted, but I'm just gonna use this guy right there. Eh, actually, I'm gonna use this center wire here. That way I can just leave it with all of those wires. Cool. I'm gonna take this red cable all the way through because I don't want that to be fished up the same way. Cool beans. And then this guy. Let's wire this up. This is once again the rear speaker wire that I'm going to use to tap in. And then I'm also going to use Oh boys, let's hope I got enough. Hopefully I do. Alright. And let's get this all. Alright, so now I've got it fished all the way up through here, underneath the carpet. And I've got it right here. And now I need to look through and find a way to get these wires up to the back of the harness. This will probably be the most difficult part. All right, so I've taped the ends together. I've got it through here, and now I'm just gonna put this through and then reach my arm back through here and just try to, if you have a friend, this will probably be the easiest, but if you're doing it by yourself, this is the best I got. Pull that through, and voila, there's half your wiring done. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is, hey guys, so what I got here is some harnesses that I purchased online. They were kind of expensive. You can build them your own, but I was just a little lazy. Um, I'll put the link in the description of the uh, page, but it was from an auto harness website that sold a 10 pin and a six pin connector that I needed um, for this connector the top right uh, matches the blue and red from the 10 pin connector from up here so I'm simply going to take my blue my signal wire that I had to extend with a regular speaker wire and I'm going to put it in here and then I should be able to just plug that in to the original factory harness and then this end into the radio head and then that way I am not cutting into any factory wires. Okay, so stripped off a little piece from that top right. This is my imaginary blue wire, and I'm just going to wrap that around best I can. And then once I've got it wrapped around, you can solder that, uh, which is probably the smarter thing to do, but I don't have a soldering iron, so I'm just gonna tape it. It'll be fine. So I'm taking my wires here, the uh, gray wires here from the harness to the subwoofer is for the right rear speaker. And uh, this black stripe is the negative, the no stripe is the positive. And I've determined that from the harness, the uh, left side here um, to the original factory harness in here, I've got a white wire on the top and a yellow wire on the bottom. The yellow is my negative, the white wire is my positive, and I've translated that over to the purple without the stripe is my positive, 
So I'm going to wrap that around. So whatever color this harness comes in, just make sure that you're writing this down and transcribing it so that your fade works correctly and that you aren't messing up your speakers and giving them wrong power inputs. Okay, we've got all these wired. I'll solder these and then uh, tape them up and then I'll plug them in and all the wiring should be done. I need to still do my ground and my positive to the battery terminal, but that should be pretty easy. All right, so I taped them all in, taped them individually and then did one big wrap around so that one pull doesn't just take it all out. Cool beans. All right. Move the head unit back out of the way since it's kind of slid in there and I will take the six pin harness plug it into the factory harness voila and I'll find my 10 pin harness and plug that in now these harnesses I bought are meant to like do your own factory, I mean, um, are meant to plug into um, an amplifier and then you can amp the sub and stuff like that. So that's why there's a bunch of extra wires. Uh, I just didn't want to deal with an amplifier, I don't need the music to get that loud. Uh, maybe it's something I'll do in the later in the future. Alright, so then I, now that I've got these plugged in. Make sure they're fully plugged in so the connections all work. And then I'll plug these back into the back of the, uh, the head unit. And I'm not going to close everything up because I want to test it first with the sub before I seal everything up. Yeah, I've got everything plugged back into the back of the harness with my new uh, shimmy harnesses or whatever you want to call them, jumper harnesses and get all the wires plugged in and then I can just kind of set this back for now. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, take my ground cable and uh, crimp on a, uh, I think it's called a female disconnect. Or male, however you, maybe, I don't know, whatever. Okay, that obviously didn't work. Thanks, Kicker, for supplying not even the right size. All right, next thing I want to do is uh, crimp on the connector for the ground. And make sure that it doesn't kind of come undone there. Really get it on there. Cool. That's good. This is a bolt I've removed from underneath here to where there's a ground. I'm going to slide this through and then put that through the hole. It's actually connected to the ground, I believe, to the seat belt harness, so you should be able to find it, whatever wire there. And then screw that bolt that down. It's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt. All right, next thing I've done, I've gotten my red wire and I've kind of just pulled the carpet up a little bit. I'm going to reach my hand under here and reach for this red wire and just pull it all the way through. Cool. Tuck that up out of the way. 
now I've got it mostly where I need it to go. I'm gonna fish it through to the other side and then get it through the hole that's over there. You didn't have to pull anything up. I just put my hand in here, fished it out. And now I've got it going through on this side. And I can just pull it through. All right, next step is to find the firewall grommet, which shouldn't be too crazy. Probably easier to find it from the other side. All right, I'll show you where I fished it up. Underneath there, there is a hole, a grommet. There's a rubber grommet on the other side, and then you can see to so the firewall. I went up under here so it doesn't get tangled on my brake. And then there's, you can see that light coming through up there, um, just above the, just behind the wire that leads to your gas pedal. Um, is kind of what it's in line with. But there's a cut out there and it comes out on the other side, you can see here. Close this. And there's the little hole there from the other side. And it matches rubber grommet here and what I've done is I'm gonna continue fishing this wire and this rubber grommet will go back in place there so I kind of fished this wire through I'm gonna pull it through I drilled a hole it was 930 uh, 932 of an inch or whatever 9 eighths or whatever that is of an inch uh, so I'll feed this through You're gonna have extra wire, obviously. That's fine. But what I care about now is getting this onto back the, to the firewall. Okay, once you get it through, I wrapped it underneath and then I zip tied it with a wire zip tie. Even has like a nice little hole to put the wire through. I uh, soldered my fuse together to the uh, power wire. Make sure there's a fuse in there that is good. This is a uh, 15 amp fuse. All right, and then I will bolt this down with to the battery terminal. That should be all the wiring that I need. I'm gonna plug in the subwoofer and then test it out before I hook everything all back up together um, and then close everything up and clean it all up um, just to make sure that it's working. All right, so I got my sub. I've got everything turned down. I'm using the plus 12 because that's the one that goes um, to the signal cable, and that's what's going to auto turn it on, uh, or at least that's how I interpret it in the directions. I've also got everything turned down, and uh, let's see if this thing works. All right, so that's plugged in. And now I'll turn the car on. There's a wire. It looks like it uh, came on as soon as I hit that. So that's good. Let's go to radio. And it's bumping. I can feel it. Of course, Lady Gaga comes on. 